I want to thank Sages for this opportunity. Uh, as my disclosures, I am a co-founder of this company that I'm going to present, and as such, I uh, have some equity through my university hospital. So talking about diabetes, 90% uh, of diabetic patients are actually uh, suffering from diabetes type 2. That makes uh, approximately 350 million people worldwide which suffer from type 2 diabetes. Um, we also know that approximately uh, every year approximately 4.5 million people die from uh, diabetic related causes <clears throat> and the treatment that we give them actually is uh, mainly diet control and pharmacotherapy attempting to control the glucose levels and the symptoms. Um, but the question is can we cure type 2 diabetes and the short answer is yes we do that uh, when we perform bariatric surgery um, probably because we reroute the, um, the nutrients to bypass the duodenum and the proximal uh, jejunal loops. Uh, but this is a, a significant um, procedure with significant uh, morbidity. And basically, we know that we uh, operate only 1% of the patients who are morbidly obese, and adding 350 million people to that is probably impossible. Um, so we know that also. Um, Bypassing the duodenum and the small bowel loops, first small bowel loops uh, uh, were validated by um, these uh, endoscopic endoluminal sleeves that they also resolve diabetes, but they have their own problems. So, our aim was actually to develop a simple and endoluminal procedure with minimal risks uh, that would resolve diabetes type 2. And we actually wanted to perform a surgical anastomosis and a bypass without surgery. So our challenges was uh, to reduce significantly the risk of the procedure, uh, to avoid using very long foreign bodies, to avoid the problematic anchoring uh, of any device to the GI tract, and also to enable at the same time surveillance and treatment of the bypassed areas. So. This is what we ended up doing. Sorry. Uh, it's a two stage procedure. The first uh, stage is uh, performing the compression anastomosis. Uh, we enter a magnet into the dejunum, and then uh, we place it there, have another magnet into the stomach, and then we drag the magnet uh, and uh, align them together. Uh, this takes about 7 to 10 days to form a compression anastomosis. Once the anastomosis is performed, um, we can then uh, go to the second stage and uh, block the pylorus by a pyloric plug. And once this is uh, done, it actually complete, completes the uh, gastric bypass. Um, we use uh, uh, flat self-aligning magnet platforms, which are pretty strong but the force is calculated to uh, form ischemia and not necrosis uh, very early in the process. Um, so this is how we do it. This is the uh, delivery system uh, with the jejunal magnet. Um, we enter it uh, into the stomach. We use a uh, um, protecting uh, esophageal tube. And then we deliver it into the duodenum. This is the pylorus of a pig. Uh, it's quite difficult to navigate it in a pig, more difficult than a human. You can see that the pig has some kind of a lip on the uh, pylorus. I call it the gatekeeper. Uh, but once you pass that, you enter into the duodenum. And then you can actually um, push the magnet. You have to push it past the ligament of trites. Once you've done that, uh, we turn on to fluoroscopy, and then here you can see um, we pass it to 70 centimeters along the small bowel. We can measure the centimeters by uh, radiographic markings. Uh, once it's in place, we disengage the magnet, and then uh, we place the magnet, uh, the second magnet in the stomach. We drag the jejunal magnet to the gastric magnet using an external magnet. Uh, and we do that endofluoroscopy, both of them align, and uh, this comprises the first step of the uh, magnetic anastomosis. Like I said earlier, in about 10 days, 
Um, you can see that this is a complete anastomosis. It looks like the pylorus, but it's not. It's actually the anastomosis. The pylorus is just to the left of that. And on the second stage, we use um, a balloon. It's a double balloon plug uh, in order to block the pylorus. So we pass that uh, balloon. We do that approximately 10 to 14 days uh, after the first procedure, navigate it and negotiate it into the uh, duodenum once it's in. Uh, under fluoroscopy, we inflate uh, the duodenal side of the balloon. That's the uh, smaller balloon in the duodenum. And then uh, the larger balloon, which is in the stomach, we use saline together with uh, a contrast material and methylene blue. So then the two balloons are there and they're blocking the passage to the duodenum. And this is how it looks at the end of the procedure. The pylorus is blocked and you can see that the uh, anastomosis is just proximal uh, to that blockage, completed bypass. So in conclusion, uh, we managed to uh, develop a two-stage endoscopic procedure that can safely create a compression anastomosis and a gastrodenal bypass in uh, animal models. Uh, we expect to begin human trials in uh, this year. Thank you.